Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Wednesday, uh, November 2nd, 2022. And tonight I'll be reviewing Stephen King's novel, Under the Dome. As always, you can find all the episodes of the show, along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me. Along with... Um, Oh, I think I already said that. Okay. And uh, always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions, or if you have stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust, happy to either read them or have you join me on the show to talk about them. And um, I was just thrown off there because usually my recording software lets me know audibly when it starts, but it didn't do that this time. So that was a little bit weird, but hopefully, hopefully that is not a major problem or indication of a major problem. We will see. But um, anyway, so as always with these book review episodes, there will be spoilers. <clears throat> and as always with Stephen King, <laughs> there it is a horror story. So there will be um, there there will be basically violence and death and things along those lines along with the paranormal and or science fiction in this case uh within the book <clears throat> so um just wanted to make sure everyone knows that before i start and let me get to the uh the summary here that i have and then i will uh begin just one moment please Okay, um, so this is a fairly long novel. I believe it's close to a thousand pages, if not over that, actually. That's right up there with uh, The Stand, the final version of The Stand, and uh, in, in length, I believe. But, um, so this novel came out in 2009, and, um, wow, so it was the... 58th book published by Stephen King at that point in his 48th novel. Obviously, that was 2009, so he has passed both of those points at this, uh, both of those, um, those records at this point. But, um, so this book really is about what happens when a strange, uh, dome like, uh, object of unknown origin falls over and completely covers a, a town, a small town, and cuts it off from the rest of the world. Um, other than maybe looking through out into the, the world and looking in, but uh, no one can get in or get out with this thing down. So this book starts um in 2017 that's interesting so they said it, he said it a little bit in the future um wait let me see here did i read that right let's see here just want to check yeah okay so it came out in 2009 but it was set in 2017 okay um so this this town uh is, is named chester's mill and it's in Maine, and um, all of a sudden, this invisible uh, barrier that is only allows certain amounts of air through, very little, um, comes down over this town, and it stops the main character uh, from leaving the town, even though he was trying to. He was on his way out. Um, he, his name is uh, Dale Barbara, and his nickname is Barbie, which is ironic in a way. But um, he was on his way out of the town uh, due to a dispute with some local um, kids, or young adults, really. Um, one of which was the son of the town's second selectman, uh, who is 
part of the major power, political power structure in this town. Um, and it turns out the only one that was able to step in and keep Barbara from getting Dale, Dale, just say Dale, from getting beat up more than he already was, was the police chief. Um, so he's, uh, he's a former army captain. Um, and so he's heading out of the town and he sees, um, I remember this part just from memory. Uh, he sees a, a woodchuck on the side of the road and, um, and then all of a sudden this invisible dome comes down and kills this little animal. And he realizes that if he had been just a little bit further, he could have been killed by this dome as well. Um, and so he starts investigating it and he, he actually, there is a, um, there's basically vehicles that, uh, collide with this thing as well. Um, there's even a plane that collides with it and kills the, the, the pilot and the wife of the town's first selectman. But, um, so the police chief, um, Howard Duke Perkins goes out to investigate once he starts hearing reports of this dome. But when he gets near it, um, his, he has a pacemaker, and apparently this dome interacts with electronics that get too close to it and can destroy them because it makes it explode. And so it kills this police chief, who was really the only person that was fair and or possibly on Dale's, Dale's side in this, this town. Um, he's very much not trusted by a lot of people because he's a stranger from the town and um so and there's other details that are not quite as important but um but now he's stuck in this town that he was trying to get out of and so uh meanwhile um so yeah so yeah this leaves the uh the town's um Selectman in charge, but really it's only one. It's the second selectman who has all the power, like I said. Um, and he uses the first selectman as the figurehead of the entire town. And um, so this uh, second selectman's name is, uh, last name is Rennie. Uh, and he's known as Big Jim because his name is James and he's he is actually... The book describes him as being rather large. Um, and uh, so after learning of this, the death of Perkins, uh, he, uh, Rennie appoints one of his um, friends and allies uh, a as the new uh, chief, uh, police, uh, police chief in the town. Uh, his last name was Randolph. And of course, with the Stephen King book, you're always going to get a lot of characters. Um, so, and, and meanwhile, the world is learning about this dome because there have been major and minor crashes into this dome from people uh, going through or trying to go through the town that now can't. Um, and so, as... As uh, Rennie is trying to figure out what's going on, he also sees uh, a way to basically take over the town. Which is ironic because he has a town now, basically. But it's still under a dome. It's, it's almost... Th there's a lot of, um, I think, political commentary in this, this story, in a way, that is really ironic. Um, he finally has control of this town, and he figures everything will be okay, even even though there's a dome. He figures it'll get sorted out soon. <clears throat> um, but in the meantime, he's going to take over, and he starts um, recruiting basically questionable candidates, candidates um, basically similar younger men to the ones that beat up Dale, including. Um, 
Remy, Remy's son. Uh, oh, Remy, I'm sorry. It's not Remy. Remy's son, who was also named Jim, but is known as Junior. Um, now, unknown to his, fa to his father, Junior has a, uh, um, a brain tumor that has not been diagnosed yet that has be begun affecting his mental state right around this time. Literally, right as the, the dome drops. Um, and, of course, as this is going on and as everyone is trying to figure out what's going on, uh, Junior is actually in the process of finding and then killing two local uh, young women that he knows. Um, so, and then he finds his, his father and then finds out that uh, he's been appointed to this police force. So you see already things are not going well. Um, so let's see here. Um, looking at the rest of this here. So uh, the, um, the authorities, the U.S. government, finds out about this dome situation and um, sends a, uh, the military out to to the to the um to the dome uh, of course to the exterior of the dome um to investigate and um the a lot of this, i just noticed this, there's a lot of jameses in this story that's weird but um there's this uh colonel james o cox c o x uh who is outside the dome calls the editor of the local newspaper um her, name, her first name is Julia to find out um what's going on and also he uh, knowing that um Dale is in the town he has Julia get a message to Dale um and then Cox asks Dale to act as the government's agent to bring down the dome not knowing the political situation in this town. Um, so, let's see here. Um, Cox wants Dale to locate the dome's power source, which is thought to be somewhere in the, in the town, probably in the middle of the town, somewhere. Um, and let's see here. Cox is also becomes aware, thanks to Dale, of the um, of the political situation uh, going on here, and so uh, Dale is uh, reinstated to the U.S. Army military and um, and promoted, and um, basically he's given a decree giving him authority over the township. Except, of course, um, Rennie refuses to recognize this. Um, so, around this time, um, the wife of the former police chief, uh, Brenda Perkins, finds a file in her, hu in her husband's computer that um, shows... Uh, Jim Rennie's money uh, laundering or stealing schemes. So she starts to worry about what's going to happen. Uh, and she's very much right to. So um, so Jim Rennie starts to uh, arrange uh, unease and panic in the town to um, basically make him look like the best choice in the situation as opposed to Dale. Um, and at this point, the, there are basically two groups that are forming here. The, um, the Rennie and his group of people that are working for him, not knowing all the facts, and then Dale and Julia and then some other people from town that s see what's going on. And um, so the this these two groups are end up meeting each other in different ways throughout the town as they're trying to figure out what's going on and find this power source. 
and um, at at one point, Rennie is able to frame uh, and arrest Dale for four murders. So, and um, they're all murders that <laughs> either the father or the son of the Rennie family have uh, basically committed in 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 order to take control of the town. So, and of course, one of the murders is Brenda Perkins, who uh, went to Rennie with this information that she had on him, and he, uh, of course, couldn't let that let that escape. So he ended up killing her. So it turns out, father and son have similar tendencies to violence when things are not working out the way they want. Um. So, meanwhile, um, other people in the town managed to get a Geiger counter and uh, to try to find this energy source. And um, it looks like, or it lo- they find what looks like a, um, a a strange object that is generating. Uh, this this dome, but they can't reach it. It has its own small force field, and um, so let's see here. This um, the conflict between the people in power, including Rennie, and those that are trying to save people instead of just um, instead of just dealing with or going along with Rennie's plans. Um, they end up breaking Dale out of, out of jail, and, uh, <clears throat> they end up having to, uh, kill Junior Rennie, just as he's about to, uh, try to murder Dale. And so, um, these people, um, when they start to touch the dome, as long as they don't have any electronics near them, they start to have uh, visions. Uh, get visions from um, oh, they touch the object. I'm sorry, not the dome. And they finally are able to break through to it. Um, and they figure out that the device was put there by um, alien creatures named. Leatherheads, due to their appearance as being leathery and alien-like, and that um, basically they are children who have set up the dome as a kind of a toy for entertainment. So basically, it's like a um, an ant farm where the aliens are in the normal human position, and then the humans are the ants. And so, meanwhile, um, due to mismanagement of resources in the town and um, all, all these conflicts going on, the um, there is there are fires that break out um, that cause uh, make it harder basically for everyone to breathe because there the amount of air that is able to pass through the town um, through the dome is is not a lot. It's not enough, when, especially when there's fire and smoke that is obscuring the um, the dome. And um, so let's see here. The meanwhile, of course, the the media is is covering all of this um, as much as they can from the outside of the dome. And um, so and there's uh there's um um lost your spot. So the uh turns out there is a stockpile of um of propane that Rennie wants to retrieve um from a location that has since been turned into a uh drug factory kind of deal 
and um and so there is um the, the guy the the crazy basically person that is running this place ends up uh can uh convincing the first selectman to join him and there is a gunfight uh, between these two men and several of the police new, newly organized police um members and of course the the propane and the chemicals uh from the drug lab end up creating exploding and creating this toxic firestorm that is big enough to um basically vaporize most of the town and so many people in, within the um the dome are killed in just that way um by the storm which is also again consuming more and more of the air within the uh the dome and the fire eventually does die out but there's still just nothing left there but toxic air and so um they're trying to figure out how to get out to break through the dome um and nothing is working and so in the end what um dale and and julia decided to do in the last ditch effort because they don't know what else to do is to um for julia to latch on to the this object that's generating this this dome and she somehow makes telepathic contact with one of these alien children uh who is not um is there by herself so it's basically a one human and one alien uh there and um and this actually this alien is turns out somewhat worried about what's going on even though the rest of the group of those children alien children think it's amusing and um Ju julia has to convince through um images through sending images of her own life uh convince the alien that the people that these are people and sentient beings in this dome um that is now going to kill them and um shares memories of uh a pain painful childhood incident with, with a basically a, a bully in her own town um and so she shares this 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 um uh, these memories of this experience with the alien and eventually the alien shows compassion and uh deactivates the the dome and um that's how the story ends with the the d the device disappearing and um everyone is that is left is saved so that's um yeah dang it james is yeah um hello rohan but yeah it, it's a really good book um it's and it's just really a, a series of events that seem crazy but they're also somewhat predictable given the personalities of the people involved especially the um the people that are in charge of everything it's um it's a really good book and um I've heard mixed re mixed reviews on it, but I really like it because it's not just about the dome itself. It's about people's reactions to it, and um, political and media um, maneuvers, and just all of those things combined. Um, so. It's a really neat story. I definitely recommend it. And there's a lot more to the plot, obviously, than what I was able to describe there. So I would definitely recommend everyone check it out. Um, it's one of the many books of Stephen King's that I really, I really did enjoy. Um, I listened to the audiobook, and that was like over 30 hours? Right? Something like either 30 or 40. I forget now. It was, it was long. But that was nice. I'd, I've always liked I've always liked longer stories that have several characters in it in them. So, and that's all I have for today. I figured that story would be enough to get to get through the episode.
and uh, I'm glad that it, that it worked out that way. So, um, yeah, cool story. It reminds me of a Twilight Twilight Zone episode or thing. Yeah, it it's very much Twilight Zone. It it does have that kind of vibe to it for sure. So, um, but thank you all for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow night with Paranormal News on the next episode of South Cedar Paranormal. Take care, everyone.